Hello everyone, welcome to Router Gods. And if you're studying OSPF, you're probably wondering how does OSPF decide where to send packets? And we're going to do that in this video. We're going to talk about OSPF cost, which influences the direction that packets go. And we're looking at topology 5B, which is our three routers and three loopbacks. So go ahead and set that up. Uh, first of all, before getting into cost, we have to set up OSPF, just a bare minimum configuration. So we're going to go into router 1 first, enable CompT, router OSPF1. So hopefully you've been watching the other OSPF videos. This is pretty basic. And we're going to do a Hail Mary command that you've seen me do in other videos. Whoops. Area 0. Okay, so we're going to set this up on all three routers. I'm going to help myself out by copying and pasting some of this. There's router 2. Router 3 is coming up. Okay, so while those routers come up and converge with OSPF, let's look at this diagram a little bit. You can see it's in a triangle, and if router 1 wants to contact the loopback of router 3, just logically looking at this diagram, if all the links are equal, you can see that router 1 will probably go through the bottom link to get to the loopback of router 3. Because it doesn't really make sense from the, this diagram that it would go up here and come back down. But the way OSPF looks at this is it assigns a cost to each link. And the cost is in terms of bandwidth. And the w standard that they've kind of decided on is a fast ethernet link fast ethernet link, if you've been studying, is 100 megabits per second, if fast ethernet link is equal to a cost of 1. So if we assume that these links are all fast ethernet links, which they should be, then this link right here is going to cost 1. This bottom link between router 1 and 3 will cost 1. And then this link between router 2 and router 3 will also cost 1. And then also getting from your router to the loopback, so from router three to the loopback, even though it's on its own, uh, it's on its own router, it considers this as an extra link and will also assign this a cost of one. So looking at this, we, we can look at it from a router's viewpoint now. If router one is deciding to get to the route of 3.3.3.3 and it's using OSPF to do that, it's going to look at this and say, okay, well, to get to this address right here, I'm going to take this cost, which is 1, add this cost, which is 1, and 1 plus 1 equals 2. If I decide to take the upward route, we've got 1 here, we've got 1 there, and we've got 1 there, which makes it 3. So 2 is less than 3, it's going to prefer the bottom link. So let's see if we can actually see this in action on the routers. We go to router 1. Next out of there, just make sure my interfaces are up, and they are. Show IP route, and you can see here that for me to get to 3.3.3.3, I am indeed going through 10.10.13.3, which is this bottom link right here. So from router 1 to the other side of this fast Ethernet link, and then hitting the loop back. We could verify that by doing a trace. And just for kicks, we can source it from our loopback if we wanted to. And you can see here 10.10.13.3. So it is indeed going through the bottom link. In this show IP route statement, you can see that the cost here, it's the second piece in the brackets, it is 11. Now, of course, you're probably thinking, now, wait a minute. I thought you said this should be 2. And it actually should be, but what's happening here is these links right now are seen as regular Ethernet instead of fast Ethernet. So it's 10 times slower, so instead of a 1 for the cost, it's going to be a 10 for the cost. We can actually change that, and indeed we will. First of all, we can verify the speed, the actual speed of the interface by doing show interfaces. And we get down to fast Ethernet 01, you can see here that 
bandwidth right here is 10 megs a second. But you can also see here it's running at half duplex 10 megs a second. We are going to fix that by using some quick configuration. So bringing in my notepad here, what we want to do is go into the interfaces, so interface fast 0, zero speed 100, duplex full, interface fast 0, 1, speed 100, duplex full. So we're going to lock down the speed and the duplex for each of our routers, for every one of our routers. So copy that, go into router 1, move away my text window there. There's router 1. Paste it into router 2. And finally, paste it into router 3. Okay, so now, do our show IP route again. And you can see that 3.3.3.3, the cost now is 2 as we predicted when we first started this video. And let's see how that's represented if we do show interfaces first. Fast01, which is the bottom link here. Fast01 is running at, the bandwidth says, 100 megs right there. And also it is running at full duplex, 100 megabytes a second, megabits per second. There's another thing we could do. We could show IP OSPF interfaces. And this will tell us that we have a cost for this interface of 1. OK, so this was a quick and easy video of looking at the cost and seeing how it influences the decision. What's happening here is OSPF assigns a cost to each link. In our case, it's one for each of these fast Ethernet links, one for the loopback, and then it decides, okay, what is the best way to get there? Here we've got one plus one is two, and two is lower than this one right here, this upward link. One plus one plus one over there equals three. Two is less than three, so it decides to go down through the bottom link. The next video, I'll show you how to change the cost so we could make things go a different way if we wanted to. And that is coming up. Stay tuned. Thank you.